Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Ultimate Bucket List, and on today's show, I give you the full walkthrough of the making of Harry Potter Warner Brothers Studios Tour London, the most visited and sought after attraction in the country. Tickets for this place are booked up months in advance, but is it really as amazing as everyone says it is? Let's find out. <laughs> So everyone knows about the story of the boy wizard who took the world by storm. Whether it's the books or the movies, most people have heard of the runaway success that is Harry Potter. The films were shot here at Warner Brothers Studio just outside London. And now you can take a tour of the place to visit the sets, see the costumes and all the behind the scenes stuff that makes these movies so iconic. But is it actually worth the money? And furthermore, should you actually visit. Now, it never really occurred to me to actually make a video about this place, or even actually come here. Contrary to popular belief, I am not a big Harry Potter fan, even though I'm dressed like a complete fanboy today. But it's thanks to my gal pal Siggy, shout out to Siggy, who recommended that I actually watch all the Harry Potter movies, because I've not actually seen a single one, and then come here and experience it all. So, is it worth the £50 price of admission? just to walk around some Harry Potter stuff? Follow me, let's find out. Once you get here, either by driving yourself or taking one of the many free shuttle buses that will actually bring you to the entrance, you'll walk across these giant ones that will illuminate the way to the actual entrance. And even outside the entrance, there's lots of cool photo opportunities, such as in front of these giant chess pieces from the famous wizard's chess scene in the first Harry Potter film. If you haven't printed off your tickets, you can collect them here, but before you go inside the building, you'll be security checked, pretty much airport styly, before they let you into the lobby. It's here that you can pick up an optional digital guide, I decided to get one, before walking into what's known as the hub. And the first thing you'll notice? Yep, there's a big giant dragon on display. This is one of the actual Ukrainian Iron Belly Dragons that they used in the film. Once again, provides a fantastic photo opportunity. There's also a small exhibit from Fantastic Beasts. It never really achieved the same popularity as Harry Potter, which is a shame. It's also here where you can visit the Hub Cafe for a quick brew or a quick snack, or this larger area, the Frog Cafe. But as you can tell from first thing in the morning, it's not overly busy. This is pretty much the main place where you can eat or drink before or after the tour. Another thing that you can do here, you can actually have afternoon tea here at Harry Potter. It may seem expensive, but you're literally paying for the experience, especially if you're having afternoon tea in a place like this. It's all very fancy, and because it's near Christmas, it's all decked out in these lovely Christmas decorations. But anyway, once you're ready to go into the actual tour itself, you'll be funneled around this small exhibit. At busy times, this is easily the biggest bottleneck, but whilst you're waiting, there's actually plenty of things on the walls for you to read and take pictures of. There's even some nice photo opportunities right here, so even though you're queuing, you'll never actually be bored. Whilst you're here actually, you might want to pick up a Harry Potter passport. So once you've visited various experiences, you can actually have your passport stamped. And it's a free souvenir of your time here at the making of Harry Potter. The reason why you're waiting so long is because they funnel you into a room where they show you a short video presentation about what to expect from your visit here at Warner Brothers Studios Tour. You then get walked into a cinema where you'll get a greeting from the three main actors before the cinema screen lifts up and reveals the entrance to the Great Hall. Now this is the actual entrance that they used for the films. It's incredibly detailed, and once they swing open the doors, yes, you've guessed it, that is actually the Great Hall itself. This is one of the most famous scenes in all of the Harry Potter films. Currently, they've got a theme called Hogwarts in the Snow in which everything is covered in snow and everything is decked out in Christmas decorations, which is very, very fancy. 
Whilst you're looking here at the tables, it's incredible to see the amount of detail that it takes in order to make things look real. The props department definitely give props to them. You'll find actual costumes from the four main houses, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw, Slytherin, and of course Gryffindor. But here in the Great Hall, it can be quite crowded, with people trying to elbow you out of the way for the best pictures. So my advice is to wait for everyone to go before you have the entire hall to yourself so you can take the cleanest photos and videos, etc. Especially of this display here, which I think they used for the Yule Ball scene, the amount of detail, especially in the glassware here, is simply incredible. Once again, it gets crowded, but wait for everyone to disappear before you take photos and videos of this. You'll then walk into the section that educates you about the interior sets, and you can learn a lot from all the exhibits that tell you all about the behind the scenes stuff. From the screenwriting, to the production design, it's all very educational, and if you're a massive Harry Potter fan, you could literally spend ages here. One of the cool things about Harry Potter is how iconic their costumes are. Without actually seeing their faces, you can immediately tell which characters wear these costumes. They're really iconic, and it's pretty cool to see them up close and personal. One of the most astounding things that you'll find whilst you're walking around this exhibit is that you'll recognize the scenes instantly from the films based on what you're seeing in front of you. So when you see things like the marble staircase, you instantly know which part of the film that's from. It's simply incredible the amount of detail that goes into the costumes, the hair and makeup, things like wigs, etc. And one of the things that will surprise you is how small some of these sets actually are. Take for example this, the Gryffindor Boys Dormitory. Now in the films, they look pretty massive, but I assure you that this is the actual size of them. It's really tiny, but it's definitely not lacking in detail. Literally everything that you see here is meticulously designed to look that way. But if you're still not sure what's going on, there's always a placard with information that will highlight what's in front of you. And someone over there is a West Ham fan. Huh, interesting. But that's not the only set that's incredibly tiny. Some of these sets are literally temporary bits of wood. Walking around every corner, there's always some interesting prop or costume that will instantly transport you back to a scene from the actual films. This is especially true here at the Potions Classroom. These are the exact sets used when you see Severus Snape or Professor Slughorn conjure up their magical potions. All of these individual bottles are individually labelled with individual props inside of them. This must have taken absolutely ages to make. No time or expense was spared in the making of these films, and it definitely shows. Whilst we're talking about that actually, you'll see a whole plethora of iconic props that you'll recognise instantly from the films. For example, this is the actual Triwizard Cup from Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Huh, this would actually look nice in my living room. If you didn't know which person used which wand, well, this display will actually tell you. But it's incredible that you'll recognise the amount of sets that are on display here in this bit of the tour. For example, this, the Gryffindor Common Room. You'll recognise it from the films, but what you probably won't see are the various hidden easter eggs dotted around the sets. For example, this portrait right here is a very young Minerva McGonagall, which is based off a real-life photo of Maggie Smith, the actress who plays her. In the Slytherin common room, you'll notice the Slytherin logo pretty much everywhere that you probably didn't notice in the films, so that's pretty awesome that you get to see this up close and personal. In every corner of this exhibit, you'll recognise something from one of the films. If you haven't seen all of the films, that's unlucky for you, you might not be able to recognise it, but if you're a fan and you have seen all of the films, you'll recognise most of this stuff pretty much instantly. Whether it's the iconic costumes or some of the statues on display, with every turn of your head, you'll recognise something from one film or another. That's especially true here at Professor Dumbledore's study. You appreciate the amount of detailing that the props department had to make in order to have everything here in place. 
If you look above the fireplace, you'll even see the hidden sword of Gryffindor. As two different actors portrayed Professor Dumbledore, they also have two different iconic costumes, which are both on display here. And yes, this is from the film too, and yes, every one of these memories are individually labelled. Every one of these paintings are hand-painted, and you can even look down the pensive if you want to. There's a cool exhibit where you can learn about the fictional sports of Quidditch, the costumes, the equipment, even the brooms are on display. Visit Hagrid's hut, where you can see his costumes and the actual hut scene that they used to film in. There's even a bit where you can summon your own broom and, oh, well, she didn't do it correctly. And this kid? Whilst you're around here, actually, you can actually hop on a broom on a green screen. The guys here, they make you do some very, very strange looking things. On the TV screen, it kind of looks like, well, it kind of looks like this. As you can imagine, I didn't bother. But if you're a fan and you wanted photos and videos of you doing this stuff, well, it's right there and available for you. After your flight on a broom, or not in my case, there's a special section on the special effects that they use here on Harry Potter. And some of these things that you think are CGI'd are actually real life but mechanical. For example, the Chamber of Secrets door actually does move, which is pretty creepy. Remus Lupin's trunk? Yep, that moves all by itself too. You'll get to visit the burrow, aka where the Weasleys live. You'll get to learn all about the dark arts here at Malfoy Manor. I would not like to be in front of that snake right now. And everywhere, literally everywhere, there's a set or part of a set that you'll recognize from one of the movies. It's incredibly detailed. You could literally spend hours and hours walking around and exploring all of this stuff. The audio guide that I got, well, that was incredibly detailed too. In fact, it's almost so detailed that it's almost overwhelming. Step into Dolores Umbridge's office, where you can see all of her pink costumes and the actual Salazar Slytherin's locket. If you want to learn how to dance just in time for the Yule Ball, well, you can do that here. There's even a tutorial about how to wield a wand properly, where you stand in front of these mirrors and poof, there's magic. Well, kind of. Be sure to take your time to explore all of this stuff. But once you're done with all of that, it's now time to step into the Forbidden Forest. Just like in the films, it's incredibly creepy. You never know what will pop out right in front of you, whether it's Lord Voldemort, one of the mythical beasts, you can literally turn it from night and day if you want to. Oh look, it's a buckbeak. Here's a lady trying to take control of it. It's incredibly lifelike and you'll be waiting a while to have your picture taken with this thing. But as you walk more into the Forbidden Forest, it gets creepier and creepier and... Ah, spiders! Lots of spiders coming from the ceiling. Yes, if you're arachnophobic, this is probably not a good place to go especially given that these giant spiders are pretty lifelike and they just literally appear from the ceiling. Ooh, a glowing Patronus. What's one of them in real life? Oh, it's basically just a dog with an LED vest. That's, um, surprising. What's also surprising is that most of this set was actually made by hand. So before you move on to the next area, you'll actually come across this mini shop. And currently, because it's almost Christmas, there's plenty of Harry Potter themed Christmas decorations that you can buy. But when you come across the train conductor's uniform, you'll realize that you're in the set of King's Cross Station, and unmistakably, the Hogwarts Express itself. This is the famous train from the Harry Potter movies. Unlike some of the other things that are models or fakes, the Hogwarts Express is a real working steam train. In a previous life, it was known as the Alton Hall but has since been renovated, painted red, and renamed the Hogwarts Castle. If you're a train spotting nerd, you'll realize why this is so funny. You'll be in a little bit of a queue to actually go inside the Hogwarts Express, but once you do, you'll actually see some of the carriages that were used in the films, and how the various carriages differed from film to film. It's pretty cramped in here, so if you're at all claustrophobic, this is probably not a good idea. 
Whilst you're here at Platform 9 and 3 quarters, you'll also see some of the baggage sets that were used in some of the scenes here, and you can also have photos and videos of you trying to push your trolley through the wall. It makes for a fantastic photo and video scene. It's also here at Platform 9 and 3 quarters where you can see the actual green screens used in the filming of the train carriage scenes. I'm pretty sure that you can actually sit in these seats and recreate the scenes yourself, but for some reason they roped it off today. And also here at Platform 9 and 3 quarters, you can make your own Christmas cards, visit the Platform 9 and 3 quarters shop where you can buy Platform 9 and 3 quarters memorabilia, and there's a poignant display of the first and the last scenes filmed at King's Cross Station, and what the actors were wearing at the time. You can also get your Ministry of Magic ID card here. But believe it or not, everything that you've seen so far is only half the tour. Before you start the other half, you'll come across the Backlot Cafe. This is the halfway point of the tour, and this is the only place where you can experience butter beer in the entire tour. So you can eat here, and the food is reasonable enough, I guess, but there's a separate queue just for butter beer. And they have it on draft, and I think they actually pump the foam separately. So what does a butter beer actually taste like? Well, it kind of looks like a beer, kind of, but the closest approximation I could probably describe it to you is that it tastes like liquid butterscotch. Non-alcoholic, of course, and if you're here at Harry Potter World, is it worth the four quid? It's about the same price as a pint here in London, so yeah, when in Rome, try one. So once you leave the Backlot Cafe, you'll actually come across some of the exterior sets that were used in the making of these films. Take for example this thing here, the Burrow Miniature. Yes, they use a model, surround it with green screens, and with the aid of CGI, it looks like an actual real building, even though this is the actual size of it. One thing that is an actual size is Harry Potter's childhood home on Privet Drive. Now, rather than using studio sets or CGI, they actually built two real houses and actually filmed in them. Fans of the film will instantly recognize this particular scene. And once again, everything is meticulously detailed, even down to the family photos and the half-eaten food that's left there. You'll find a sense of déjà vu in here, because you've probably come across a house that looks exactly like this. Even the back gardens of these houses are real-life gardens. Out here, you'll also find Professor Sprout's greenhouse, where there's a whole bunch of young mandrakes growing. They say do not pull, but everyone does it. Wow, Jesus, they actually squeal, just like in the movies. Out here in the back lot, you'll also find the Hogwarts Courtyard Fountain, the Purple Night Bus, which is an actual bus, and the set of the Hogwarts Bridge, which looks absolutely amazing, especially when you're walking along the inside of it. Out here, you've also got some photo opportunities of Hagrid's bike and the car that Harry Potter escapes in. But it's time now to step back inside, where you'll be greeted with this grotesque statue of Batilda Backshot. This is at the start of the makeup section of the tour. It's incredible to see the amount of detail that it takes to just do things like makeup. The amount of rubber masks, the amount of special effects, and even Hedwig here has a whole bunch of circuitry to make them move. Boy, Emma Watson looks very, very plastic today. It's here that you can even control your own Dobby and play around with the monster book of monsters. You'll get to learn all about things like Thestrals and werewolves and dragons. It's all very, very interesting. And if you stick around for long enough, you might just learn how much work it takes to do all of this stuff. Oh, there's another book peek and ah, another spider. The gallery of goblins is very, very interesting because it has all of the face castings of all of the goblins that were used in the Gringotts bank scene. Each one of them had their own folder as to how they would look like from shot to shot. You think that all of this stuff is CGI'd now in the 21st century, but no, they still actually have to make all of these faces from scratch and by hand. Hello there, handsome devil. 
And that's just the makeup, we've not even started on things like costumes for these people. There's plenty of things to see and do as it pertains to things like models, how the camera crew shot things, where to CGI various bits etc. If you spend your time and ask some of the wonderful staff what all of this stuff is, it's all very very educational. Very very interesting, even if you're not a Harry Potter fan. Once you've seen enough paper models and CGI'd and makeup and effects and stuff like that, you'll be greeted with the set of Gringotts Bank itself. Wow, this place is mega. If you didn't know that you were in Warner Brothers Studios tour, you would actually think that you're in a very fancy bank. It's incredibly lifelike. And this section recreates that very famous scene here at Gringotts Bank. There's plenty to take photos and videos of here. Each one of these tellers is incredibly lifelike, and these are the actual masks used in the film. Right here in the center is the main man himself, and this makes for a fantastic photo opportunity. Spend your time to get some nice photos and videos here at Gringotts Bank. It's definitely the nicest set here at the making of Harry Potter. Well, in my opinion anyway. Once you've finished with Gringotts Bank and all of its detailed wonder, it's now time to actually go into the vault itself. They'll tell you a little bit about how the vault was created before you actually see the vaults themselves. The amount of props that they use to make this vault scene is incredible. Remember, every single one of those cups, every single one of those trophies, every single one of those bars of gold, they were all made by hand, and there's thousands of them. You can even recreate the scene yourself where Harry Potter uses the Sword of Gryffindor to find the Hufflepuff Cup, and in this display cabinet all by itself, the actual Hufflepuff Cup. You'll then move on to a CGI set of the Gringotts Bank when it's completely ruined, and oh dear, is that thing coming for us? Okay, he's saying fire to everything, it's time to get the hell out of here. Pretty lifelike, and pretty cool. The next thing you'll visit is Diagon Alley. Yes, the actual Diagon Alley that they used for the filming of the alley scenes. And you'll visit some of the famous shops that are mentioned in the books and the films, such as Ollivander's, the wand shop, Mr. Mulpepper's apothecary, complete with all sorts of weird and wonderful things that you can buy, Wiseacre's wizarding equipment, and all of these shops are incredibly detailed, like they're actual shops, but I don't believe that they actually are. I like this display of Weasley's puking pastels at Weasley's Wizard Weezes. Try and saying that when you're drunk. But overall guys, take your time here at Diagon Alley. It can get quite crowded, so my advice is to wait for everyone to clear off before you have your pick of photos and videos. After Diagon Alley, you'll come across the art department, and you'll actually get to speak to members of staff who worked on the film, and they'll tell you all about the art direction of the film which is incredibly meticulous, as you can imagine. Everything in the film started off as a drawing somewhere, and it's incredible to see some of the drawings that they used to make the things that you see in the films. Possibly the last thing that you'll see at the making of Harry Potter is the 1 24th scale model of Hogwarts Castle. Yes, so they used this exact model with a whole bunch of green screens around it, and this was used for all the exterior shots of Hogwarts. If you look carefully at the model itself, it's incredibly detailed. Everything down to the lights, the turrets, the amount of snow on it, it's all meticulously designed, and it must have taken a whole army of people just to recreate this. What's cool is that the lights change to see what it looks like during the day and during the night, and they'll even show you the green screen wizardry that it takes to transform this model into a real life looking building on film. There's even an exhibit where you can make your own snow and fire. And there's various materials that they'll use to make snow, and there's various things that they do to simulate fire. That's pretty much the end of the tour. You'll then come across this Wizard 1 library. If you look carefully enough, these are the names of all the people involved with the making of the films. So this is a nice tribute to all of the hardworking men and women that put so much effort into making this franchise of films. But before you go, surprise surprise, there's a giant gift shop. If you're a massive Harry Potter fan, 
you could literally spend hundreds of pounds in here. Not just because everything's expensive, of course, but because there's so much to buy. You can buy the ones of your favorite characters. I suspect most of these people have several of these ones. And as you can imagine, the Harry Potter ones are the most popular. But look around the shop, guys, because there's literally hundreds or even thousands of items that you can buy for yourself or the person that you know is a Harry Potter fan. Whether it's special edition books, clothing, house-themed goods, if you haven't had enough butterbeer yet, you can literally buy it here in a bottle. Once you leave the gift shop, you're back literally here in the lobby. You can choose to hang around, eat and drink, or just go. So I've just completed my visit here at Harry Potter World Warner Brothers Studios Tour London. And I've got to say, it's absolutely amazing. They say on the website that it'll literally take you three and a half to four hours to see everything. And I was a little bit dubious about that, but it's actually true. I actually spent four and a half hours here and I'm not even a real fan. So if you are a real fan, you could literally spend all day here. The tour was amazing seeing all the details for things like props and makeup was fantastic and every member of staff I encountered was very lovely so it's definitely worth the experience. Seriously make this the number one thing that you gotta do if you're here visiting London. Okay Nin, I'm sold. What do I need to do? Well you need to come here to Harry Potter World at Warner Brothers Studio Tour in London. Rather inconveniently it's nowhere near London. It's actually in the town of Leesden, which is about 20 miles northwest of central London. And in order to get here, you can either drive yourself, there's plenty of free parking here. If you want to park right next to the entrance, that's priority parking, that'll cost you an extra tenner. But most of you will be coming in from central London. So the easiest way to get here is to get a train from one of the major train stations to a train station called Watford Junction. From Watford Junction, you can catch the free of charge shuttle bus, and you'll know which ones they are because they're all decked out in Harry Potter graphics, to literally the entrance outside here. You'll need to show your valid ticket in order to ride for free on these shuttle buses. Alternatively, there's plenty of other buses and tour groups that will take you here also. The cost? Well, a standard entry is about £50. For that, it's a self-guided tour where you basically walk yourself around, you could pay extra for a guided tour. I think it's about 250 quid or something, but you do get the full VIP experience. And there's lots of optional extras that you can do also, including things like hotel stays, Harry Potter style afternoon tea. The list is endless and you'll need to consult the website. Speaking of which, to book tickets, you'll need to go directly onto their website, www.wbstudiotour.co.uk, and literally check the availability there. Please note that tickets are booked literally months in advance, so you'll need to plan way ahead if you want to actually come here. If you are visiting central London, make this the number one thing that you book to ensure that you get some availability. Is there anything else I need to know? Yes, it's a very expansive tour. You'll be doing a lot of walking, and the website says that you'll be here for anywhere between three and a half to four hours. Now, I was very dubious about that until I walked out four and a half hours later. So you'll be here for quite some time. If you've got any accessibility issues, if you're disabled, if you're in a wheelchair, that's not a problem. It doesn't stop you from doing absolutely anything here. If you see something in a gift shop that you like, buy it right there and then. The reason why is because different shops have different things. And when you get to the gift shop right at the end, you might not be able to find the item that you're after. So, if you see something you like, buy it there and then. And finally, it can get quite busy. Especially if there's school groups running around, you've just got to be a little bit patient. To avoid the crowd and to get the best possible photos and videos, my advice is to actually wait for everyone to go first before you get free reign of your best photos and videos. There's a lot of people here guys, and I recommend that you help people take photos and videos because more often than not, they'll return the favor. If you are a Harry Potter fan, this definitely comes highly recommended, and you've definitely got to visit this once in your life. If you have enjoyed this episode, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Comment on that comment section below, especially if you've got any questions, and if you've got any other bucket list ideas you know what to do, 
If you get enough suggestions, I'll make a video about it. But guys, thanks very much for watching. We'll see you in the next episode. We'll see you in the next episode. And I better make this the last take because it's now chucking it down with rain. Just in time. Trust my luck. Yay me. Is there anything else I need to know? Yes. Yes, could it? Is there anything else? Wait for that car to go past. And now it's starting to rain, so I've got to be bloody quick. Is there anything else I need to know?